All right. So we got Michael Durr, one of our Top Speed Golf certified instructors here, having a little bit of fun there. But we have this uh, divot board, and we're going to talk about one of the reasons you don't want to fall back, one of them being that you're going to hit 12 inches behind the golf ball. And that's actually what happens. So go ahead and demonstrate kind of falling back there a little bit, coming through impact. Your weight ends up going this way. And what it does is it makes your low point way back here behind the golf ball. Then the club starts to either chunk into the ground and you hit it 10 feet like you did there, or if you save it, if you're a good athlete, you'll save that, kind of push the club as far forward as you can, and you're gonna hit it slightly thin. So if you're used to chunking and thinning, this could be the root cause, the culprit on this. So now, let's go ahead and do a couple drills to get you moving your weight forward, hitting down and through it every single time. And one of the ones that I really like a lot is just this little squishy golf ball. It's not a golf ball, it's like a little weighted ball. I don't even know where it's from. I got it from Academy Sports or something like that. You can use a rolled up towel. You can use a regular golf ball, whatever you want to do. Let's actually not worry about hitting the golf ball yet. Let's just do a couple practice swings. And what I want Michael to do here is put it under the outside of his toe. You'll notice how that kind of angles his right foot inward. Now, when you make your back swing, if you have a reverse pivot, go ahead and move the ball and show him the wrong way here first. You're going to slide those hips and notice how the outside of the foot starts to roll out like that. So we both see this all the time, every single day. That gets you in this reverse pivot type motion and then you end up falling back the other way in the downswing. Go ahead and put that ball under your foot there again. And now that his foot is angled forward, go ahead and make your backswing real slow. You'll notice how that right hip stays in when he does that. It's not sliding over here like this and getting the reverse pivot. So this angle helps that hip to stay in. It also helps him to feel like where that, that ball is kind of higher on the right side, it's almost like rolling downhill. As you start your downswing, you're gonna be getting that weight shift to the left. And here's a big key. For people that fall back, as soon as they start their downswing, they start to push off that left leg and their body starts to fall to the right. So show them the wrong way here again to where as soon as he starts down, his, right, his left leg is gonna extend early, and then he's gonna fall back on his right side. So you'll see how he's just falling back. It's gonna get that divot behind the golf ball again. So what I want Michael to do here on the second part of this drill, after we've worked on a few swings with the ball, is he's gonna get a little weight shift to the left and feel like you're moving downhill, almost like there's a mountain slope here. I'm moving into my left side, and this knee flexes as I start my downswing. So go ahead and just do that and kind of pause halfway down. You can see how he's got his weight shift going to the left, this knee is flexing as that's happening, and that allows him to stay in his posture. If you're looking from the down the line view, notice how he's not coming up out of his posture here. He's staying down and covering this golf ball. And then from there, all you gotta do is just go ahead, then you let the leg extend and come onto a good full finish. Perfect there. Now notice how in the finish, left ankle, left hip, left shoulder, or, or middle of the shoulders, all stacked up you feel like you could kind of just stand there and talk to somebody if you wanted to, just perfectly stacked and balanced over that lead foot. So let's do a few more now, recapping on it. Ball under the outside of the right foot as you make your backswing that keeps you away from that reverse pivot. As you start down, get the weight shifting to the left, get the knee coming down, and then you can go ahead and post up in that left side and make a good full finish. If you do that, then it's gonna get this divot in front. Now we started off this video with this training aid called the divot board. This thing's really cool. Go ahead and make a good swing now and show them what the divot board is supposed to look like. There we go. Love that one. That thing smoked. Michael's got awesome club heads, but you see it's 99.6. Is that a six iron? Yeah. What club's that? Yeah, so 211 carry, 226. I can't promise you're gonna get those results, but that was pretty daggone good. So when I'm looking at this divot board now, this is the cool thing about this. When he fell back, he started turning over these sequins back here at the back of the board. That's that scooping up on it. We're not gonna do very good if we're doing that. You notice on this second one, the golf ball sits here on that yellow dot. And anything that starts at the middle of this golf ball to about an inch behind it is perfect. That's your perfect divot that's gonna be cleanly struck. And that's just because you have to hit a little grass right as you're coming in the golf ball. If I get too far, like toward the front end of this golf ball or farther forward, my divot starts, it's gonna be a little thin. If I get any farther than an inch behind it, it's gonna be a little bit heavy. So we can sit here and hit shots all day long and just make this in our living room the right kind of movement. So now, go ahead and try one out. Make a couple swings here, just without a ball, like if somebody was in the living room, 
get rid of the golf ball under your feet. We're going to make a normal swing and just try these same ideas. Let's go ahead and see what the divot looks like. There we go. So that one was really good. You can see again, this divot board, if I'm turning it this way, it's starting right at the, the back of the golf ball. Now he would have hit that one slightly toward the heel, kind of a little off the heel spot of the, of the sweet spot. And that's what's so cool about this. You can see, if you're just practicing with this training aid, you can see if you're looking from down the line here, are you swinging inside out? Are you swinging outside in? Are we hitting the divot in front, divot behind? All those things you can tell right here from this, even if you're hitting off the heel or you're hitting off the toe like that. So a lot of cool stuff you can tell just from this one training aid. Now, this divot board, there'll be a link somewhere on this page if you wanna buy one of these. If you buy one from that link, we get a few bucks, helps us to make more great videos for you, uh, kind of sport top speed golf. But if not, if you don't get it from us, get it from somewhere. This is the best training aid that I've seen to really help your contact um, start to Pay attention to your divots when you're out on the course too. Now, there's one last thing here, and I see players all the time, they start to get that divot in front. We start to get the weight shift in front every single time. But a lot of times players have been told the wrong way to square up the face. So what ends up happening is you end up standing up out of the posture and trying to roll the forearms. And when that happens, a lot of times you'll be very inconsistent because I'm losing my posture, my hands are kind of flipping over, and I can either get shots way out to the right or snap hooks to the left. Now I'm gonna play a preview of a video I call the anti-roll method. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through exactly the right way to square up the wrist, to square up the club, so that you don't have to feel like you stand up and roll your forearms over like we don't wanna have happen. So if you've been taught that in the past, this is gonna help you to stay in your posture, it's gonna help you to get more forward shaft lean, it's gonna help you to hit the ball farther, all those good things. So go ahead, click the card somewhere up here on your screen. If you don't see the card, Go down below to the link in the description, click there, and I wanna share with you the anti-roll method right now. Can't wait to see you there, let's get started. So here's the bottom line. If you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep, and that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this, there's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now, when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, you'll see the face is straight up and down and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there,